Hey everyone, and welcome back to Endangered Crypto. I know it's been a while since my last video. I've been traveling and it's been very difficult to put out content. So today I wanted to discuss uh, this game, Prospectors. And it's a game that surprisingly has gone under a lot of people's radars, um, which is surprising considering that it's got major money-making potential. And, you know, what's great about it is that it's a, uh, got a great sound in-game economy um, on paper. All the pieces are there to have a great time. And it, the best part is now is a great time to get in. They're about to launch a new sort of land sale, uh, which you can see down here, uh, the Grand Land. And I'll explain a little bit about how this game works. Um, but the the... Sale is still ongoing, and so if you ever wanted to get in, now is the best time. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about what is Prospectors. What is the game? And the game basically simulates the West American gold rush in the 1800s. And you as a player, you know, you control three workers, and... And they're your primary money-making asset. And the best part is, is that you can actually get them for free. So you can actually start this game for free. You don't have to invest anything. You know, obviously the potential is greater if you do invest, but you can start for free. And, and what's really great about it is that the free players actually make up the backbone of the economy without having free players and you know accounts that that are workers that are getting things done the game actually wouldn't survive so i think that that's a really great factor about it is that the game is built with free to play in mind and those players you know they they, they don't suck out from the economy like in a lot of other games but they actually are essential to it so let's jump in uh, i'm going to hop into one of my servers uh, so right now there's two lands, uh, Yukon and Wild West, and, and you know each of these lands represents a different gold rush. Um, and from what I can see, you know when, when the resources and the gold start to deplete from one land, they start to talk about releasing a new one. Um, and what they're doing differently this time now is they're actually linking up the land so you can send some resources from one of the lands into the Grand Land, which is coffee, it's an essential resource for your workers, and uh, it's not available in the new land. So I think that's a really cool feature as well to kind of give relevance to the old lands as well. So let's hop into Wild West. Okay, so here we are in uh, Grand Land and <laughs> Um, you know, when I was saying that, that there's no resources, it's quite bare, you can see here that it's actually, it's all flat land. Um, and I, I, I came in this game quite recently, but I believe that, you know, the, the terrain is supposed to be littered with trees and other markers. And, you know, it's all been strip mined bare. Um, so there's not a lot to be done. Um, but, you know, we'll hop in, we'll have a look. So all of these buildings that you see here, these are all player made. Um, and, you know, when you get a piece of land, you know, if you're a la landowner, your land will have some resources, whether it's trees, whether it's, you know, this guy's got clay, there's coal, and of course, the most important one is gold. And the way that this works is gold is the most important resource. Gold can be mined and then taken to um, a bank and exchanged for PGL, which is the cryptocurrency. So let's have a look. I always forget how to do this. Here we go, yeah. So it's 1,000 gold gives you one PGL and it's convertible back and forth. And um, yeah, that's basically the objective of the game. You know, getting that gold is a whole, there's a whole process to it. So let's hop on over to that plot that we saw earlier with the gold, if I can find it again. Oh my, I seem to have lost it. Okay, well, 
we'll just hop on to anyone. Okay, here. So, you know, in this case, whether it's coal, whether it's clay, these are all harvestable. So the simplest way to do it is, you know, you get your workers to start harvesting it with the required tools uh, or by hand. But your, but your output for this is going to be very small. And you're also limited by the amount of inventory that your worker can carry. What's more is without having some kind of structure, you're limited to one person per node. So in this, in this node, you'd only be able to have one person working here and one person working on the other plot. And so, you know, obviously you want to increase that efficiency. You want to, you know, if this was gold. You want to be cranking it out of the ground as quickly as possible. And you can do this by, of course, building structures. So I believe, yes, so this is a gold mine. And in this gold mine, um, you know, there's five out of six jobs here, meaning that the owner of this land has built this gold mine and they can now hire other workers to mine the gold for them. And this is where the free players come in. So if I, I had this land, I built this, I can now post a job saying, hey, you know, um, I have two or three slots available in my gold mine, um, come and mine it. And the way that that works is, you'll see here an order, is that the landowner will post a price per minute. And uh, this is terrible, this is basically slave labor, but the landowner keeps the gold and you know will share some of it based on the salary that they give to the miner. So you can see here uh, uh, this particular worker. You know he's worked for well I don't know how long he's worked, but he's got 28 minutes left, and he's got 600 gold. That 600 gold is going into the pocket of the owner, and the remaining gold, you know whatever the rate is, will go to the miner. Now. It, it, right now, the rates are running at about one gold, but I have heard that when you know these lands first launched, um, a single player was able to make twenty dollars worth of gold in a day as a worker. So you know, again, the potential is there, and uh, what makes well, I'll I'll get into the economics of what makes it work later. But yeah, and uh, now the next question is, you know, this mine was built but to build the mine that also took some resources the equipment that all of these miners are using the pickaxe the pans all have uh, a base resource that is required to make them so whether it's iron and wood for the pan and the pickaxe wood for the mine it, you know all of these resources have to come from somewhere and it's not just oh i'm going to build a mine and that's it or oh i'm going to buy some tools off the market that's it. No, it, it, someone has to make them. And so that's what makes this game really interesting and exciting is that even if you don't have gold on your land, there are things that you can do to enable the gold landowners and you can make money off of that. So, you know, you're, if you are a landowner, you might have iron, you might have coal, you might have trees on your land that all can be harvested. And then th those resources, they need to be taken over to somewhere to process them. So, for example, we've got here an iron furnace. So if you've got iron, right, you would send it over or, or in this case, to an iron furnace. Uh, if you've got coal, you know, they would be buying it. Clay, they would be buying it. And then they would process it into these items. And then these items get sold on to places like a tool workshop, for example. And... This is the, the player that's making the tools that are going to go in the market. And, you know, it's really interesting because when you start the game, these are not available. So you have to start harvesting the base resources with your hands. Then once you've got them, you can start building these tool workshops and these refineries and start to process goods. So there's a whole technological buildup that happens at the beginning of the game. And there's a lot of resources moving around and you need workers for all of that, whether it's to move resources around, whether it's to work the furnaces, whether it's to build the structures. And, you know, that's why getting into the game at the beginning is the best time because there's such a demand for workers because you need to move things around, you need to build things, you need to harvest things. And 
you know, it makes sense why why some players were able to make up to twenty dollars a day on uh, um, worker only accounts because the demand is there. The the that gold needs to get pulled out. Now, again, you know, as a worker, there are things that you can do to improve your own output, whether it's investing in transportation equipment. So we saw here that there is, here we go, a card factory. Um, you know, you as a worker, as a player, you're limited by your inventory capacity. And if you wanna move more things around, if you wanna be acting as a service provider and you know, being a courier, you're gonna need one of these carts because you can carry more, you can carry heavier items. Things like iron beams can only be transported by players that own carts um, and animals. So that becomes a, a limited resource because I think animals are a limited resource. So you've gotta have an animal to pull your cart. Um, and if you own that, you can charge a premium. Um, then there's also things like coffee, which allow your workers to move faster. So it takes time for your workers to move from one piece of land to another. And you obviously want them moving at a certain rate so that, you know, they're, they're work that they spend more time working and less time moving to a place where they need to work. Um, there are things like getting a certificate, which allows your worker to work 300 consecutive minutes before they need to take a break. So, you know, your workers, if you're on a free account, they can work 60 minutes and they got to stop for 60 minutes. Um, in this case, you know, your workers can work straight for 300 minutes. Um, and I think they still only have a 60 minute cooldown. I'm not sure about that. I got to check that. Um, but, you know, th these are things that you can do to increase your efficiency, increase your output. And you can choose to buy it after you've harvested some gold. And I think maybe getting a certificate, this is one of the ways that you can burn some gold um, from the game. Um, and I think the more people that get it, the price goes up. So again, you know, you want to get your gold early. You want to buy this early so that you can buy it cheaper. And yeah, you know, the, the game's got a really nice cyclical economy. Uh, eventually, you know, that gold is going to leave the economy. That's the point. You're harvesting it to pull it out, convert it to PL PGL. And, you know, I imagine that that does put some downward pressure. But what I do like about it is, you know, unlike a lot of other games, um, where they're kind of faucets, like, you know, you're doing an action and you're getting a currency and that's it. it, it this is built with that in mind. You've got to go through a whole process to get the gold out. And it really does simulate the gold rush from the 1800s because again, you know, y y you had people rushing out, getting gold, flooding gold into the economy. And, and I guess that selling pressure is part of the experience of the game. And again, that's why you want to get in early because when you get in early, that puts a lot of buying pressure because a lot of people are going to be buying, putting gold into the economy through PGL. They're going to buy their PGL, convert it to gold because they want to be paying those, those premium rates for the workers. Uh, they don't want to be using their workers to harvest gold and then use that gold to pay for other workers. They're going to want to get the workers building stuff from day one. Um, because it's it's how you're going to get your ROI back very quickly. So, you know, again, it, it's a great time to get in. Um, it hasn't launched. You're going to be part of that day one gold rush. And there's a lot of opportunity here. And I think you should definitely check it out. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. We've also started up a little Discord group. Um, if you want to join and be part of the projects that we're looking at and, you know, discuss about how you know, crypto projects and crypto making techniques. And, you know, for, for games like this, where having alliances is really important. Um, there's a whole alliance thing where you can restrict certain jobs to only allies. Uh, you can give allies special pricing and you can coordinate and say like, oh, you know, I'm going to be building this in this plot of land. Uh, keep your workers nearby because I'm going to uh, uh, have this kind of work. And again, you know, it's about communicating and optimizing the... Uh, uh, time that workers are spent on downtime um, to maximize your output. So come on over, check it out. Um, and if you found this content useful, you know, please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.